So, uh, directly after the Bottoms Well fight, you get to play the worst minigame in video game history. Uh, it's just a, a short little cutscene here until all the cutscene, or all the game is, is you press square to start filling the meter and you press square again to empty the meter. Now, it goes up one tick at a time and how this whole thing works, it doesn't matter how big or small your breaths are. Uh, you just need to put 41 breaths into her total. And so, the easiest way to do that, uh, since you can put up to 10 breaths into her at a time, which means that um, which means that you have to do a minimum of 5 total breaths, so that you can do like 40, or uh, you know, 4 10s plus 1, 4 9s plus 5, something like that. Now, Technically, it is possible to get 11 breaths into her with a single, uh, with a single one, but it's frame perfect. So you could do it in four, uh, in four big breaths, um, if you were frame perfect on all four of them to get the 11. But that's not really viable for a human. So just do the five plus plus a bunch of nines. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and so the nice thing about doing uh, the, like there's two ways to do it, right? Generally, I prefer to do five and then a bunch of nines because that way I don't have to count them. Uh, you know, you, you just you do five and then you just do nines until it's over. So I did nine. So now we're gonna do the five, I guess, just because I'm messing up here. Um, but it's totally fine. So you do five. And the other, so so the nice thing about doing five plus a bunch of nines instead of doing, you know, uh, one and then a bunch of tens is because if I accidentally do eight instead of nine one of the times, then we can make it up with a ten after that. You know what I mean? You can correct uh, so that you don't have to waste a bunch of time. But it's really not that big of a deal. Just do the five, do the nines. The way that I mostly remember how uh when nine is is that these it goes up th this 3d model goes up by about three or four on-screen pixels each each breath except eight will visibly right here eight will visibly only go up two pixels right there did you see how tiny that movement was that's because that's eight so you know that the next one is nine and you can press the button right when the thing starts to go up as far as the next square press, it's got to be right when Cloud stops shaking his head. So shake, shake, boom. Right when he returns to center position and stops, that's when the game will accept the next square input. Now, I already pressed square, and I waited like five frames, and he still hasn't done anything yet. Don't panic. If you press square again right away because you don't think that you started, you're going you're gonna to do a zero breath. So just trust yourself. Wait until he stops shaking his head then hit square, and then you gotta wait. Because remember, it's the worst minigame in video game history. So, uh, so you know, we just gotta deal with it. There's the little eight, so give her a nine. Cloud shakes his head. Start the next one. You don't even gotta count these. I'm not counting them right now, because you can tell that that one was eight, so there's nine. And there you go. We've done it. After those couple uh, dialogue boxes, there's no more dialogue boxes, and you don't have to run out of this room. You get warped out of it. So you can go ahead and just buffer upright and run, because the next thing that we have to do is talk to the uh, woman in front of the, in front of the house uh, at the bottom. So you can switch to right, you know, switch to down right, kind of talk to her. So this is another one of those spots that I was talking about earlier, where if you, uh, if you talk to her, You'll notice Cloud walks into the house, but if you're holding X while you talk to her, Cloud runs into the house. So just a tiny little time save there is if you're holding X while you talk to her, Cloud runs into the house instead of walks. However, she is one of those characters though, where like you can, you can get into a situation where like I'm holding X against her and pressing circle and Cloud's not talking to her because he's actually too far away. Like right now, see this? He's too far away, but if we were to release X and press it again, now we can talk to her because the walk allowed him to get closer. So that's kind of the problem with holding X while you talk to people sometimes is that distance problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, 
just know that that can happen. All right. So here, uh, there's going to be a text selection where we need to take the second option, which is to rest. It comes up after Cloud taps his foot. So you can just mash here until you see Cloud tap his foot, and then you know that it's time to take the second option. Right there. Boom, let's rest. And now, you have yourself a cutscene. So we're going to mash here. So we just mash through this text real quick, but now be attentive when uh, when Tifa gets up, or, or when when it loads into the room here, and Tifa's here. Because check this out: if you were to mash, and then when Tifa starts running, you follow her, you kind of get stuck behind her. Oh no, I'm stuck behind her, right? So if you are buffering right and run though while you're talking to her, so Cloud immediately runs, you can get in front of her. So, that's just, a, that's just a, a tiny little thing. Buffer right and run while you mash here. When she says, come quick, be ready, and you can get in front of her. From here, uh, this, uh, this old woman is kind of in the way. So, if you buffer right and down right out of the house, you get stuck behind the lady. Same kind of thing. So, instead, buffer, uh, instead buffer down and run out of the house to get down and around her. And the next thing you have to do is just try to run up the stairs here, and you will initiate the cutscene where you get the Shiva Materia. Be slightly careful here, though, because it is possible to softlock on these stairs. I don't know exactly how to trigger it, but uh, sometimes when Cloud tries to walk down the stairs here, he can actually softlock. So I always make sure to run all the way right and all the way up, just to make sure that it doesn't happen, you know? Just to make absolutely sure he doesn't soft block, I try to go wide around that corner. All right, and then you just have a cutscene. Uh, the cutscene is going to end with the characters saying that like the electric fence is a job for Cloud, and then we need to run back down to the shore. So um, at some point during this uh, during this cutscene, when they start to say like, "Oh, that sounds like a do job for Cloud," start buffering down and run. So that right away you start running down here. And just get yourself down here. Buffer down left. Make your way down to Priscilla. And so now this cutscene is just mashing until uh, until Barrett comes down, and he kind of makes this motion. So I look at uh, I look at Barrett during this cutscene, and he's when he makes a motion, he's got like two text boxes, and then you have to make the second choice. So. Barrett motion right here, two text boxes, second choice. And now we get into the dolphin jump. So we're loading into the dolphin jump right now here. Let me first show you guys just the super easy, anybody can do it, you can just do this and move on method. And that is that you press square to jump, right? If you press square to jump from the starting position, you miss. But if you keep pressing square, you jump from that spot and you make it. So that right there, that's the, uh, that's the baby, super easy, anybody can do it method. Just keep pressing square until you jump the second time. Now, if you want to get it in one jump, though, what I would do is buffer, run left, right? Uh, buffer, run left until it's a pretty big window. I think right here actually works, or like right here might be kind of more near the end of it. I'll actually be kind of surprised if this works. Yeah, that that didn't. Um, unpausing and then hitting square was a little bit weird. But yeah, like if you go just a little bit left, you see there's this like kind of black dot right here that then has this, this business over here. If you're like on or just to the left of the black dot, I think it starts at about here and it ends at about here. It's like right in this zone right here. If you go directly left to there and hit square... Then you can make it in just one jump. It does take the dolphin a while to swim over to you, though. <laughs> but there you go. That's the dolphin jump. All right, all right. It is time for Upper Junon. Uh, so for here, I just buffer down and run with a little bit of left to get around that little thing. Switch to down left on the screen transition. And then switch to down when you get in front of the the uh, 
button. And then what I do is if you if you run cloud left and around the button, he stops right here, but you see how his arm lines up with the right side of the button? I want it to line up a little bit further away, so I'll uh, tap R1 just once. Um, and what that what that lineup does is it just means that we're going to be able to just keep buffering down and run, and we'll go right into the door. Not super important, but that's what I do. Just down and run right into the door from there. And then, first thing you're going to get is a very short cutscene. When Cloud shrugs, you're about to get control, so buffer down and left to get around the guy, and left to get into the room. Uh, when you get into this room, you're not going to get control until you're right here, so you can start buffering just down, because uh, this is a room that is angled. So you can start buffering just down, and then you're going to go left, Go to, the, go to the locker, and it's the second choice to change into the uniform. But because you don't get control until right here, just go ahead and only buffer down as you, you know, as you uh, clear the text box. All right, so at this point, you've just got yourself a cutscene. Now, after these guys say, like, we'll sing, ooh, ah, ah, right? Okay, so at this point, this is kind of when you start paying attention because the guy is going to turn to you. You just mash until the red guy turns to you, and then it's the second choice. Um, and actually, I'll show... It's not that big of a deal if you miss this one. So, so mash until he turns. Second choice. Cool, all right? But what if you missed it? What if you're going, you mash, and... Oops, I missed it. Just just do just do it again. See see how he turned back to us like right away when he turns back to you, second choice. Just just be attentive, right? And now you actually have control during this part, but you can't get past this guy. But, you know, you can just follow him. All right. So, after you run out that door, you get a short cutscene that only has one text box. It's just this one. And now, after this scene, we're going to load into that door that we just came out of. We're going to load into the next room. So at any time during here, just buffer up your down, right, and X. Because down, right, and X sends you in here. Uh, you know, and I switched to down for the, for the quick run around the corner. Uh, that's Cloud over on the left. You don't got to move here, though. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of dialogue. And then the trick uh, that we're trying to do is we need to run into the alley between these two dudes. So here's the deal with this part. Can you see the guys right away? Yeah. So so these guys are going to run down, and they're going to stand in this alley, and we need to get into the alley. And if we're fast enough, we can actually just slip right in there. If you're slow, though, another guy comes and caps it off, and then you have to talk to them to get them to go in. Uh, but you can slip right between them, and it's a little bit faster. So what I do is there's a little bit of text, and uh, and through uh, at the end of the text, buffer down and left, and that will get you to run over this way. And then when you're about lined up with the with the with the highlight right here, uh, which is like the the arrow that's painted, you know, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. When you get lined up with that, I start going only down, and that will run down along here. And then you see these uh, these like drains. Um, when you get lined up, you know, you're on you're on the, the painted arrows, and when you get lined up with the drain, switch to just left, and you should, or you might slip right through them. If you don't, you have to react very quickly to know whether you need to adjust down or up. Uh, but here we go. So, it's a little cutscene. After he says, good idea, start buffering. And it was down left into just down now. And then right here, switch to left. And we slipped right through them. You see that? Swish. So that's, uh, so, so that's the fast way, right? Um, because if you don't do that, if you, if, you don't, uh, if you don't get the swish, right? Then what ends up happening is this other guy that's behind you. If you're too slow, this guy gets here, and then now you can't get in. And you have to actually stop and talk to him. And then you go, right? So that's much slower. Uh, so go for that swish, you know? 
Okay, it is now time for uh, this mini game, which if you've only played this game casually, you've probably never done well at this game ever. It's impossible because they don't explain to you how to do it. So first, just mash through until he says, all right, start mar ma marching. And now here is how you do this game. Let's pretend or, or let's let's use this as an example. So what's going to happen is you're supposed to get into the empty spot, but really you only have to be lined up with the back row. You don't actually have to be in this spot. So what we're going to do is actually get between these two guards. And the way that we do that very easily is we only hold down and run until we gain, uh, when we gain control. So we're just going to hold down and run, and when the game gives us control, what's going to happen is Cloud is going to run down, and he's going to bonk into this top so top right soldier, or like front right soldier. And then as the so when the soldier passes by, our, we keep holding down run. When the soldier passes by, the, uh, the down run is going to run Cloud down further, but then this set of guards is going to is going to pass in front of you and you're going to bonk into the middle middle guard and at that point stop running down and walk right until you are lined up in between these two guards and then start walking left and that's how you get into position so it's just hold run and down until boom bonk bonk into the middle middle guard walk right start walking left all right uh, so let's just talk about that part first here. Running down. So, bonk, bonk, walk left, or walk right, walk left. And there you go, we are now walking in line. So that's how you get into position. But, that's not the whole game. The, the next part of the game is while you're walking left and that text box, there's going to be a text box that appears on the left. And every one of those text boxes you want to press circle on. Don't press circle too fast. Um, and don't, you know, just like right when each number comes up, the, the guy counts one, two, three with text boxes, right? And every one of them you want to confirm with circle kind of to a rhythm while you're going while you're walking left um it is helpful to hold circle uh when you do it and we'll show you so boom boom walk right or, or yeah walk left and then and then every one of these the first one has a little bit of a delay to it but then after that it's circle to confirm every one of these text boxes and you'll notice that every time i confirm one of the text boxes our score goes up so again Running down, bonk, bonk, walk right, walk left, confirm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and if you're perfect, you should get box 12 to come up. Uh, and there you go, that's it, that's, that's the game. Now, I said that you should hold circle a little bit, I want to test something, I'm going to test what happens if you tap it. Because I remember when I was learning this. Yeah, see, look what happens if you tap circle. Your score doesn't go up. You see? So you do have to hold circle a little bit. If you just tap circle, your score does not go up. So down, down, right, left, confirm one, and then hold, 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 hold. And there you go. Uh, and so, if you got if you got above 50%, as in you got 51 or higher, then uh, he says they just shot up, and then you get yourself 5,000, which is very good. Uh, that's what you want. So, if you get six ethers, you can sell them at the next shop for 4,500, and then you'll have to adjust your shop to spend 500 less, uh, Jill. But, uh, but... Here, um, if you did it right, you get 5,000. If you didn't even get the six ethers, then you need to practice the game. <laughs> and then here, it's just a bunch of mashing for quite a while. Um, in fact, actually, when Rufus goes into the thing here, right? Uh, at this point... So Rufus gets in. At this point, you don't even have to mash until the screen fades black. 
So if you want to take a rest on your hands, you can just rest here for a minute until the screen fades black, then go back to mashing. There's a choice there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and now they teach you the next game. So it's still just mashing. And then on this part, though, you can rest your hands. You can stop mashing because it's just uh, it's just this. And then now he turns to you and says, now you try it. So the first time he turns to you to say, now try it, it's just a text box and you just clear it. And then they go through it again. Next time, though, and this one's much more important than the first one. Next time he turns to you with a text box choice, uh, or next time he turns to you with a text box, it's going to be a choice. And you have to take the second option. If you take the first option, you have to wait for them to go through all this again. So second option. This time you don't have control until they leave. Uh, but but there's no cutscene, so you immediately just buffer down right out of that room. And then you just buffer down right here. So now, remember how I was saying line yourself up with the arrow? With, with like, the, the highlight arrows? You do that again here. Because now we're going to visit the shop. And so what I do is, again, down left to line myself up with these arrows. And then you see how there's this, like, unpainted spot before the head of the arrow right here? There's, like, a there's like a stripe that's unpainted. On that spot, I switch to left. So it's down left into down when you're, when you're lined up with the arrows, and then switch to left when you hit that. Uh, and that should whoop, put you right into the shop. And then it's straight up. This is a very weird room. Up goes kind of up left in this room. Uh, so... Here's a shop for you. So um, this is another thing where it's like all of this, you can figure out these numbers for yourself. Uh, but what I buy, I think I got this from Caleb Hart. Uh, what I buy is two Phoenix Downs, two Echo Screens, one Hyper, ten Tranks, and a Tent. Uh, so pretty easy. It's, it's right for two, right for two, um, just one, and then up left for ten. And there you go. So that's that shop, and that's all you got to do. Um, now, this is, this is the part, though, where if you got the six ethers, you might want to sell the six ethers here. All right, and then down, and you got to go into the next room here. So, so next one, right away, this is another up left room when you press up, but you got to go in here to grab the enemy skill. So it's up and around and talk to this guy, and then uh, go straight right. In this room, you go straight down into down right to get to the... Uh, and, oh, wait, actually, it's down left into down and down right. Okay. Uh, get down here and grab this enemy skill. Be very careful not to talk to this guy because it's a super long text box that comes out. Uh, so grab the enemy skill. Don't mash or you're going to talk to this guy. So uh, uh, grab the enemy skill and be on your way. And then uh, coming out, so I buffer up. And then, like, right when I can see Cloud switch to left to, to kind of quickly get out of that room. Buffer down right into down. And then Junon is kind of funny. So the first room is down. The second, third, and fourth rooms are left to get through. And then the last room is up. You know, it's because, like, you're looking at it from an angle. And as you're looking by, right, the angle kind of changes. Uh, down to come at the camera. Left, left, left to go by the camera. Up to go away from the camera, right? So we just finished the down room. So now we switch to left. And then left again. And then left again. And then switch to up. Uh, because that shop and that enemy skill is all you need from Junon. And now it is time to do the command game. So in our in the elevator video. I'm not sure if I mentioned the thing about your stone in the elevator video and how, like, technically it would be good to have to, um... Because your stone at this point is still what it was from the last elevator button press. That's what set your stone forever ago. Um, and so, technically, there are stones that are more favorable for RNG on this part, such as stone 33... Uh, and so, like, if you really want to get nitty-gritty with your elevator manips and do some research, you can, you can make your manip document, like the one that I have, uh, uh, list out, like, y or, or you can make manips that aim for, uh, a better stone, if you want, 
this is when it comes into play. That's why I bring it up here is that this is where you can get better RNG or you're more likely to if you have a more favorable stone. Uh, personally, I don't worry about it. Um, but hey, it, uh, it could be a difference of like five to 10 seconds. I think like at worst, it's like a 10 second difference at the very worst. Um, but I'm not positive about that. Anyway, time for the command game. So first we're going to get a couple text boxes, uh, but don't over mash circle here or you're going to queue up a circle command. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Just stop mashing and ignore the, the, the command that you're on. But like right here, he says ready. This is the last text box. So don't mash here. Just hit circle. Uh, right. Just hit circle. And then here we go. Now, here's the deal about the about the command game is I can tell you right now that this is a turn right uh, command that he's queuing up right now. This is this command game is less reactive than it looks because you don't actually have to wait for the text to type out because if it's right here. It's a, it's a right turn, and if it's on the top left over here, it's a left turn. And then the other four are the face buttons. If it's right here, it's triangle. If it's right here, it's X. If it's right here, it's circle. And if it's right here, it's square. So uh, you could do this without text. And basically what you want here is you want to get 100 points. Now, 30 of those points are pretty much absolutely free at the end. Uh, so you really only need to stress out about getting to 70. But, uh, you know, I like to get to 100 and then just relax. Um, there's one funny thing about this part, though, that we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so once I get to 100, I just face forward, because to get the 30 points at the end, you have to be facing forward for the, uh, whoop, that was my controller. Um, you have to be facing forward during the special at the end, which is one thing that's kind of weird. So one thing to watch out for, especially, see, watch this. It's, this is something to watch out for, especially if you need the 30 points from the special, is that he didn't say turn right to turn toward the, to turn towards everybody. All he said is now finish strong. And that command means turn yourself all the way to the front and then hit circle. I think you can actually hit almost any button and it works. Uh, I guess I just hit circle. But you have to be facing forward. And so if you happen to be facing the camera at that point, you got to turn yourself all the way around. Um, but yeah, also just to show this, if you do accidentally like over mash and he starts doing circles here... It's all right. Just kind of don't panic. Just ignore his first couple actions, you know, um, and don't buffer up more actions because you can you can just get all out of whack, you know. Just stop pressing things and uh, and empty out the the action queue uh, because w how it works is you can always queue up one action beyond the one that you're currently doing, right? So if you mash through that text box, what's going to end up happening is you hit circle and Cloud begins the circle animation and then you hit circle again and he queues up a second circle. Any other button presses that happen after that during the first circle animation won't do anything beyond queuing up just that next circle. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you can always queue up one ahead. And so... Um, and so that's why just don't panic and just wait for it to queue out. And I think that's all we need to say about this game. You only need 100 points, but you need 100 points. Because for getting 100 points, uh, Heidegger gives you the Force Stealer, which is a weapon that we're going to pretty much need. Um, you pretty much need the Force Stealer. So get 100 points here. Another very funny thing of note is if you are very unlucky, this game can go on for a super long time and he can give you a ton of commands. And if that happens, it's actually possible to overflow your points over 256. So if your points go over 256, they roll back over to zero and then you get screwed with a score of like four. Uh, so... For all these reasons, you know, once you get to 100 points, just chill. You know, you'll be fine. 
All right, and that's Junon. That's the uh, that's the command game. That's Junon. It is now time to get onto the cargo ship. Once he says, like, hey, I thought you were dismissed or something like that, right here, hurry up is what he says. You can buffer just up, left, and run. Cloud looks like he veers too far off to the left, but he'll get in there. And then you get two text boxes before your little boat cutscene.